from Acts the 8th chapter, 14 through the 17th verse. Praise God for each and every one of you, First Lady Simmons, to Evangelist Palmer, to the musicians, the praise team, to each and every one of you. Thank God for Mr. and Mrs. Ryan being with us today. We praise God for you. Praise God for each and every one of you on today, being in the house of the Lord. Acts 8, chapter 14 to the 17th verse. We're going to take a thought from there on this morning. And your Bibles, your iPads, your phones. We're going to look at Acts 8, chapter 14 to the 17th verse. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they said unto them, Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet as he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. The thought today is receive the word, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the word, receive the the Holy Ghost. Receiving the word means to come in possession of the word of God. To become a container. We're supposed to read the Bible every day. Read the word of God every day. So we ought to become a container. A carrier of the word of God. We ought to be a conduit for the word of God. We ought to permit the word of God to enter into us. And to penetrate our hearts and our pure minds. God says in, in the New Testament, God says, I'm going to write it in their hearts and in their minds. We must acquire the word. We must become living epistles of the word. We must become walking Bibles. We must become the living word of God as Jesus Christ is in each and every one of us. Receive the Holy Ghost means to prepare your heart. When you receive it, you must prepare your heart to receive it. You must make room for it. You must clean your temple. You must cleave to that which is good. You must be filled with the promise of the Father, of the Holy Ghost. We must be filled. We must have the comforter, which is sent in Jesus' name, the Holy Ghost, which is resident and should be living and operating in our life. But we have to acquire it, we have to keep it, we have to guard it, we have to nurture it, we have to feed it. And it becomes more prevalent for all of us today as we live in our society and we watch the news and we see what's on the internet. It's important for us in the kingdom of God, in the church, as individuals, as a local body, as an international body, to be functioning and to be effective in the 21st century church, like never before, we should be living epistles of the word of God, receiving and functioning in the Holy Spirit. We must catch on fire and know what the word says, functioning in it, using it, using the authority that God has given us through Jesus Christ. We need to operate under the anointing under the influence of the Spirit of God. You know how people say they're under the influence, but we ought to be under the influence of the Spirit of God. And these that belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, we are known as sons and daughters of the Most High. Not under the influence of other liquid spirits, but under the influence of the true Holy Spirit of God. In these series of messages that I began a couple weeks ago and we uh, went to something else for a couple of weeks, we come to the conclusion of the matter of us how to operate in God's Holy Spirit in the world today. We need the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit in every believer's life. We get it. How do we get it? We get it by repenting from our sins, by asking God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. We get it by receiving the Word of God, receiving by the Word that's being preached to you, and read to you. We receive it by praying and fasting. You know that we always got to pray. The Bible says, Luke, that mankind ought to always pray and not faint. That don't mean you passing out. That means 
means don't lose heart in what you're doing. There's a meaning for you to pray. There's a meaning for you to communicate with God. Anybody you don't communicate with, you don't have a strong relationship with. I don't want to see a husband and wife that never talk to each other. That marriage is not going to live long. But if we want to live, have a relationship with God and we never talk with him, we have to commune with God. We got to pray and fast for it. We got to praise and worship God. Praising is every day. We ought to praise God every day. We ought to worship him. Worshiping is not just lifting our hands. Worship is a lifestyle. The lifestyle that we live, that people would see Jesus in our lives each and every day. We can receive it by the laying on of hands by the men and the women of God. You can keep it once you have it. Once we have the Holy Spirit, we can keep it. And the Bible tells us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. I preached some weeks ago. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit by doing things that are contrary against the word of God. But we ought to know, number two, number one, we ought to know that we shouldn't grieve it. Number two, we ought to know that you're saved from sin. If you're going to receive the Holy Spirit, you got to know in yourself that you're saved from sin. And God has filled you with the Spirit of God. We have a belief, not a feeling. You know, many times we say, I have a feeling. And it's okay in the Pentecostal churches. And we shout and we praise God. But really, when it gets all said and done, we got to know in our heart. We got to believe that we say. We got to know that we say. Because sometimes you don't feel like you say. Sometimes you don't feel good in the morning. That doesn't mean that you're not a Christian. It doesn't mean you're not a saint of God. So it's not in the feeling. It's in the belief. You got to believe. The enemy is coming after your belief. That's why uh, Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, I'm praying for you that your faith fail you not. It's all about your faith. What do you believe? The enemy is after your faith. He's trying to take what you believe. So you got to know that you're saved and filled in your own mind. Number three, you got to let the love abound in your heart. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you got to let love cover all. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins, a multitude of faults. And God has commanded us to love everybody. Because God has given us his agape love, which is unconditional love. Number four, we got to pray every day. If we're going to have the Holy Spirit, we're going to receive it. We got to pray multiple times a day. How can you do that? You can pray sitting in your office with your eyes open. You can pray while you're working on your assignment. You can pray while you're driving your car. And then you can have a prayer time in, your, in the morning when you get up. You can pray before you go to bed at night. But Christian saints of God ought to always be praying and not fainting. You ought to always be praying. You can say a little prayer. I often tell people when, you, when things are going on and people ask you to pray for them and you see it, pray for them right now. You can pray for them. You see it come across the internet. You see somebody call you. You can say a prayer to God right then. You said, if God didn't just call me about Ted, God, I ask you to heal Ted's body right now. That's a prayer right there. You put it in the atmosphere for God to do it, but you got to pray right there. Number five, you got to read the word of God daily. You got to continue to stay in the word if you're going to keep the Holy Spirit daily. You got to let your mind be renewed. There's an ING, the renewing of your mind. Anything with an ING means continual. You got to continually stay in the word of God. You can't read the word of God and just throw it away. You got to read it every day. And now we have all these apps and we have things on our cell phone that we can get a scripture every day. You ought to at least read a scripture every day. Everybody ought to be reading the word of God. If you want to be consistent, you want to be saved, you want to be filled with the spirit, you got to read the word daily. Uh, let the word dwell richly in you. Then you know what the word says. And then you can defend yourself against the enemy. When Jesus was uh, being tempted of the devil, he said, uh, he told them what the word said. For it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You got to get in the word of God that you be able to fit it because uh, Paul said that when I went to do good, evil was always around me. So you got to know the good and the evil that's always trying to penetrate our mind. Number six, you got to keep your joy level. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. You can never lose your joy. You got to always keep your joy. You may be going through something. You may be going through some sickness. You may be going through some difficult uh, challenges. Your family may be going through. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. You got to know what the word says and keep the joy uh, level inside of you. Why? By praising and magnifying the name of the Lord. You heard me say this two times. You often hear me say two times to praise God. 
when you feel like it and when you don't. You don't get a day off because you don't feel like it, but you praise God every day because every day is a day of thanksgiving. Number seven, you got to be open-minded if you're going to have the Holy Spirit working in you. If you close minded, nothing can get in. Like my grandfather showed me, he said, if you got a closed hand, nothing can get in and nothing can get out. But if you have an open mind, an open hand, somebody can always give to you. You can always receive from God if you have an open mind. Closed mind people not going to go far with God because you're not letting God impart into your mind. So you got to follow the unction of the Holy Spirit. We got to be quiet, learn how to be quiet and listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church, to us. The Bible tells us to be slow to speak, swift to hear, and slow to anger. So you got two ears and one mouth. So you ought to be doing more listening than you're doing talking. Uh, you ought to pray. When you pray to God, don't you always talk? Give some time for God to minister to you. He may speak a word. He may put a word in your spirit. God may drop something for you to read in the Bible. He may put a song on your mind, but you got to have an open mind to receive what God is speaking to you. See what he's putting in your mind, in your body, and your soul, in your spirit. There is a war raging in the world. There's a physical war going on over in the Ukraine with Russia. But there's a battle taking place. There's a constant struggle, and there's an enemy on a daily basis that's trying to get us off course. There's a spiritual battle that's going on with all mankind. And we're losing too many battles to the devil. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're losing too many things to the, to the devil. Jesus has already given us the victory. How many believe that today? You read the word of God, we came through Easter to let you know that God raised Jesus from the dead, so we already got the victory. He's got victory over death, hell, and the grave. He's got the keys to the kingdom. Uh, Jesus already won the victory for us. And then before he went back, he said, I'm going to pray to God another comforter from the Father for you. That if you receive it, you can use this God-given authority. You understand that many times the church is as strong as it should be, us as individuals, because why? We're not consistent. We must be consistent. Faithfulness is consistency. That's what most of the time people fail out at, at work if they would just go to work and be consistent to be there on time. They said, that's 90% of the battle. You would just be consistent and get there. So God is calling us to be faithful. Sometimes we're weak as water because we're not reading the word, we're not staying in the word. And then we got to under, understand that to get stronger, we have to, we have to endure to the end. A lot of times we're trying to run a sprint, but we're not in a sprint. We're in a marathon. We're in a marathon. You got to work. You, if you ever know marathon runners, they got to work to build their heart up. That when, that, that, that when they start to lose that win, that they get a second win. God wants us to get a second win in the spirit. We've been through a pandemic. We've been through all kinds of things that are going on. And we don't want to be weak, but we want to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. When we are not as faithful as the great cloud of witnesses, the Bible tells us, that have went on before us. Many of us know the great saints that have went on before us, and we read the pioneers of the Bible, and all of us know people that are around us that cause us to get saved, that we saw in the church. They were faithful, they were consistent, they prayed and they fasted, and we got to do the same thing. And we're going to stay with the Lord. We don't want to backslide, we don't want to lose our salvation, but we're going to a crossroad. And many of you can say, like I can say, many of our children are not saved. Many of them haven't repented of their sin yet. And we cannot give place to the enemy. We cannot throw in the towel. Uh, we, can, we can't get tired and wore out and act like we don't have any power, but we got power from God. We cannot be satisfied with the status quo. We cannot be satisfied just saying that's how it'll always be. But you gotta know it's not gonna always be like this. But we should be the people that affect change through the word of God. And then whatever God gives us to do, we ask God to give us a strategy of what to do and how to do it. To cause our circumstances to change through the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus promised not to leave us comfortless in the word of God. 
And we have access to the power of God. How many people really seek the power of God through the Holy Spirit to work in their lives? That they would have self-control, that they have peace and joy and godliness and all the fruit of the Spirit, the old pieces, all eight pieces, of, nine pieces are working together to make that fruit. The church can't be the true church without the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of God. This church that Jesus Christ has died for, we believe that, right? Amen. Is ineffective without the Holy Ghost and power of believers. Amen. We can't be satisfied without having power that God has given us to be activated in our lives. We cannot be a powerless church that has no effect on the enemy. Satan, who was working 24 7, seven days a week trying to destroy mankind, and he uses people, he uses whomever he will. And we got to be on our posts that God has given us. When we're powerless, we become like the seven sons of Siva in the, in the 19th chapter of Acts. When they try to act, or, act like Paul did, they try to operate like Paul. And when they were doing that, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They didn't have what it took. And the evil spirit spoke to them. They said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? In other words, you have no authority. You're not operating. You don't have what you say you have. But we ought to have what the Spirit of God wants to give us. The Bible said that tells us that they will overcome and evil prevailed against them. The Bible said they fled out of the house naked and wounded. But God received the glory because fear fell on many of them at Ephesus and they believed and confessed. The devil is leaping on many of us today. You understand that? What do you think things are going on in society? Uh, but we have to have the power of God resident in us and working in us. That the enemy doesn't take us over. Exposing you for being powerless in the kingdom of God. We cannot give up, saints and friends of mine. We cannot give up. We cannot throw in the towel. We cannot stay silent. We cannot stay distracted. We cannot stay confused, and we definitely cannot be unfaithful to God. It's God that's bringing us through this pandemic. It's God that's going to bring us through whatever we need to come through. Y'all used to sing this song, and they used to testify when I was young, and said, he's a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. Yes, he'll work for you. When you go to get operated on, uh, you still need to pray to God that God meets the hands of the doctor. When you go to the courtroom, you may have one of the best lawyers in here. You may have had a Johnny Crockett, but you still need to pray that God will be involved in what you're going through with. You need the power of God. And God is that power is readily available to every one of us that are saved. And we should use it. We should call on it and say, Lord, give me more power. Lord, give me more joy. Give me more peace. And we all always said, Lord, help me. When we look at the book of Acts, and look at the book of Acts, the book of Action in the Bible, Acts of the Apostles, is the beginning of the church. It's the ascension of Jesus uh, through the Holy Ghost was taken up to glory. He had already done his assignment on earth. He, he went to the cross. He died. He bled. And God raised him from the dead. And he was seen. Uh, with a, he did all many, all the, the Bible said all these infallible proofs. He did all these things when he was risen from the dead to show the, show the saints and the disciples that he wasn't a ghost, but that God had raised him from the dead. The book shows the beginning from Jerusalem to the outreach of Judea and Samaria. And Jesus had told the disciples to tarry in Jerusalem and not depart until they had received the Holy Ghost. He was going back to the Father. He said, I'm going back to the Father. But I, you need to receive power. You need power uh, to live here on earth. You need power. Uh, that you need indwelling power that you continue the work. He said, you're going to do greater work than me. Why? Because Jesus was walking when he was on earth. He was walking. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. At the same time, the Spirit of God is moving around. And Acts 1 and 8, he said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. When you have the Holy Spirit, it makes you an effective witness that not only do they know you're effective in Freeport, Rockford, Chicago, but Lord, they know that the Spirit of God is in you. And we can believe um, as the day of Pentecost, that 50 days after Jesus arose, something happened. Jesus 
have been seen for 40 days after the resurrection. And we can believe for 10 days. 10 days they went into the upper room. He said, tear again until you be in due with power. And the Bible said the disciples went there. Mary the mother of Jesus was there. And other women, they went and men, and they went and they prayed and they fasted. And they were on one accord. Y'all understand one accord? We can get a lot done when we're on one accord. When we're in harmony as a race, as a church, as a people. When we're in harmony, we get a lot of things done. Because one will put a thousand to fly. Two will put ten thousand to fly. When we get together, things begin to happen. But they were united on one accord in one place, praising God. And the Bible said, suddenly, and suddenly, what happened? A heavenly, mighty, rushing wind filled the house where they were sitting. They were all there. The Bible said there was 120 of them there. All there. And they received the Holy Ghost and they began to speak uh, in other tongues as the Spirit gave them other. And the Apostle Peter gave the first great gospel message when you read the Bible about the Holy Ghost, about God, about Joel, about David, and about Jesus. In Acts 2, 17 through 21, Peter, he said, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass. In the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my service, and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, the Bible said, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, who shall ever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So the Bible lets us know 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls gladly received the word of God. They were pricked in their heart. And they were saved that day. And they were baptized. Number one, to really receive the word of God, you need a glad heart. Anybody that wants to be saved, you need a glad heart. God comes in a, the spirit of God comes in a glad heart. Those that gladly received the word of God, the Bible said they were baptized. Uh, when we serve the Lord with gladness, God makes us glad. Everywhere in the scripture, read your Bible. Everywhere in the scripture where there was a glad heart, something transpired. God comes with a glad heart. We got we to gotta even come to church with joy. We ought to come in the door. We open the door of the church. We come in. We ought to come with joy. They used to tell us whatever was bothering you, whatever was laying you down, you shake it off before you come into the house of the Lord. Come into the house of the Lord with joy. Everywhere in the scripture, where they had a glad heart, something transpired. Glad tidings of great joy. In the eighth chapter, they received the word with gladness in Samaria. Number two, in Acts chapter eight, persecution had caused the gospel to spread. See, sometimes. Uh, I know we get upset when we get persecuted and, and difficult things happen. But because of persecution, the Bible said it called the gospel, the good news of Jesus, the spread across. In Matthew 28, 16 and 20, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted, the Bible said. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, Jesus said. In heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. Teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo I with you always. Even to the end of the world. So being comfortable. I know we all like to be comfortable. But being comfortable doesn't stretch our faith. When everything going great with you. It don't stretch your faith. But when you get sick and you need to get healed, uh, and when something starts happening in your household and in your family, something about your faith gets stretched. But when you're on good time, you know, when you got everything you need, if you got a million dollars and your bill is fifty thousand dollars, you don't need no faith. You got money. But if your bill is a hundred thousand dollars, you only got two dollars. 
You need some faith. God, I need you to do something for me. I need you to make a way out of nowhere. So being comfortable doesn't stretch our faith. Stephen, the deacon, the evangelist was stoned to death in chapter 7 for his faith and belief. They lied on him. They testified. They gave their history from Abraham to Jesus. They stoned him. But he was full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said he did sort of like Jesus said. He said, Jesus, receive my spirit. And the Bible said he kneeled and cried with a loud voice. He said, lay not this to their charge. You know when people treat, mistreat you, you got to have the spirit of the Lord to say, lay not this to their charge. Amen. Stephen said this as he was dying, just like Jesus. Saul, who was not Paul yet, when we know him later in the scripture, was hauling men and women to prison. The saints were being put in prison for calling on the name of Jesus. Saul was even present holding the coats of the murderers when they killed Stephen. But this action caused the church to scatter from Jerusalem. The Bible said they were scattered abroad and went everywhere preaching the word of God. Just from this incident, number three, there are things that God allowed you to go through to depend upon him. There's things God are going to allow for you to go through for you to learn how to depend upon him because you say you trust him. For you to learn how to obey him. That he will get the glory out of your life. You know if God wouldn't have uh, let that adversity come your way, you'd have been doing something else instead of what you were supposed to do. Amen. You would have turned from the Lord. So today in, in our text, the Bible says that Philip went down to Samaria and preached the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. The birth, the life, the death. And the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Philip, who was one of the seven men in Acts chapter 6, when you read your Bible at home, appointed to help the apostles to take care of the widows and other business in the church, along with Stephen and Prochorius and Nacanar and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas. These men had an honest report. They were full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. These men functioned in their roles in the Bible. They were evangelists, they were missionaries. And no matter what role we serve in the church, we should have an answer of the hope that we have in the Lord. I don't care if you're an urshan, I don't care if you're in the kitchen, I don't care if you're in the kitchen committee, you ought to have an answer of the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. You ought to always know why are you saved? Why did you get saved? Why do you have, uh, why are you here? And we ought to be ready to testify of the goodness of God no matter where you're at. So you gotta be honest. Number four, in order to receive the Holy Spirit, you got to be honest. Anybody believe that? Amen. You got to be honest in order to receive the Holy Spirit. Honest means good and truthful. Not lying, not stealing, not cheating. Truthful character. Not hiding the truth, not trying to deceive, but you ought to be gotten and sorry and have a contrite spirit. And Acts 8, Philip preached so in Samaria and worked in his gifts and anointing that the people were ready with a glad heart to receive the word of God. God worked miracles through Philip in Samaria. Samaria was a healing city. Its name in Hebrew meant Watch Mountain. It was located 30 miles north of Jerusalem if you look at your map, biblical maps. It has a lot of biblical history. In Samaria, Philip cast out many evil spirits, paralyzed, crippled people, who were being healed. There was great joy in that city. Why? Because God was delivering people. He put Simon the sorcerer out of business. Simon even believed when he was baptized. We should have the Holy Ghost power that we can put the enemy out of our city. That we can shut down what the enemy is doing in our camp. You believe that today? We ought to be able to run the devil out of the church, out of our homes. We ought to be able to run the devil that's very weak and havoc in our young children and all over the place and country. We ought to be able to pray and get a connection with God. That God will give us strategy of what to do and how to do. In Acts 8, chapter 50 to 17, verse, I'm trying to wrap this up. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people were one accord. Here we go again. The people were one accord. They were united together. They gave heed to the things that they were being told. Was Philip, what Philip was speaking to them. He was hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many of them that were possessed with them. And many that were, had the pulses and that were, that could, they were lame, they couldn't walk. And God healed them. And there was great joy in the city. 
And there was a great certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city, who used sorcery. He bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he himself was somebody great, to whom they also gave heed. From the least of grace, saying, This man is of the great power of God. And to him, they gave great regard, the Bible said, because of the long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, the Bible, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wanted to hold the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God. Listen, they heard with their ears that Samaria had received the same word of God they received. They sent Peter and John down there, who when they came down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet they had not fallen up with them, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So Simon, the former sorcerer, saw the power of God. Uh, he received from laying on hands. He wanted to buy it. But you know you can't buy the Holy Ghost. You can't buy it. Peter rebuked him and told him and repent, told him to repent. And Simon, the force of sorcerer, told them to pray for him. Can we pray for somebody and somebody else has to pray for? Pray for us. Some of us need someone to pray for us. Pray for us that we do the right thing. Make your way. As I begin to close this sermon today, receive the word, receive the Holy Ghost. You can receive it. It's time to receive the word of God. It's time God, every word of God is right. Everything that God has allowed to be put in his word is for a reason. It's time for us to receive the total, complete word of God. It's time to be filled and refilled with the Holy Ghost. It's time for us to unite and be one in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God ought to be one. All churches ought to line up together and work together in the kingdom of God. There's only one God, there's only one Jesus, there's only one baptism, there's only one Holy Ghost. We ought to work together. So it's time for us to say, Lord, forgive me. You know, we've been doing wrong. It's time to say, Lord, forgive me. On the wrong I've done, the wrong I've been. To get on the right course. Lord, remove my sin out of my life. Lord, I repent for the wrong I've been. The wrong I've been doing. Lord, remove this selfishness out of me. You know, selfishness is not of God. God's a giving God. He gave his son. He gave his life. Now, God always give. I always used to have the time they watch the kept on ticking. They said it took a minute, but God keeps on giving. No matter what we do, God keeps on giving to us because he loves us so. He's always giving us so many chances. We sing the song, he gave me a second chance. He gave me another chance. But God keeps on giving us so many chances. You don't have to raise your hand how many chances God has given you. How many times God turned your life around. How many times God has made it worth way for you when you've done wrong. So the Lord removed the selfishness out of me. Lord, help me to function and focus upon you. Lord, it's you that I need. The world needs you. I need you. I need you more today than I needed you yesterday. Because yesterday is gone and tomorrow may not be mine. We don't know about tomorrow. We don't know if we'll be here tomorrow. But we know about today. And we got to get it right today with the Lord on our side. So we have to say, Lord, fill me again. Lord, bless my soul. I need my soul blessed. Lord, ignite a fire in me to do your will. Many of us got so many talents and, and many things that God has assigned us to do. And we're sitting down on God. And it's time for us to get active and get busy doing the work of God. Not being busy body, but busy in the kingdom of God. Lord, have your way in my life. Lord, here I am. Use me as you see fit. Lord, I want to be an effective witness for you. I want to be a holy witness for you. Lord, I submit myself to you. Lord, I surrender all. Y'all heard the song say, Lord, I surrender all. Here I am. Here I am. Here's my cup. Fill my cup. Let it overflow. Lord, any way you use me, I'll be satisfied. God's got an assignment for you. You always say, Lord, any way you use me, I'll be satisfied. 
You may not be the pastor. You may not be the preacher. But God has called you to do an assignment in the world today. Yeah. Lord, move me as you see fit. Yeah. Lord, I praise your holy name. Lord, I serve you for the rest of my life. Lord, you increase and I decrease. Sometimes you got to say, I'm going to get out of the way. Yeah. You got to get self out of the way. No glory, none of your flesh. God not going to let you get the glory. He gets the glory. Yeah. So he said, Lord, I decrease. You get all the credit. Yeah. You get it all. It belongs to you. You deserve it. Yeah. Lord, I'm your child. Yeah. Lord, I got to have you. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all know the rest of it. I got to have it. I got to have it. Lord, I got to have you. Yeah. I got to have you. Lord, I need you. I need your power. I can't make it on my own. I can't stand here on my own. I can't stay saved on my own. I can't stay here. Lord, I need you. And I can't get along without you. Lord, I need your anointing to be in my life. Lord, I'm seeking you with everything that I have. If you start out the day with the Lord and end the day with the Lord and all day you with Jesus. The days get sweeter as the day go by. Lord, let the fire of the Holy Ghost follow me. Lord, send fire from heaven and send me on fire to do your will. Help me to burn with the Holy Ghost. Put a fire in me that I'll never go out and send the Olympic fire.
need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the uniter. It will unite us all back together again. When God had to confound their language at the Tower of Babel, they had the wrong conception. They had the wrong reality. They said, we're going to bring, we're going to build a tower all the way to heaven. And they had, the Bible said they had one mind. They were going to do it. God said, we got to confine their language. Because these people are one mind. See what we can do when we become one mind. Even though they had the wrong idea, God knew they had made up their mind to do it. When we become one mind, one people united together in the kingdom of God. One church. All churches are in the kingdom of God. Serving one God. Loving each other. Doing what God has called us to do. We want our world to change. We want our situation to change. God's the only one that can do it. He's the only one that can do it. Yes, he works through people, whoever let him. God will stir up someone. Because God always never leaves himself without a leader. There's always a leader. God always stirs up somebody to lead. There's leaders in the church. There were leaders of the civil rights group. God had to stir up somebody to lead. But we ought to work together as the people of God. Be united. Receive the word. Receive the Holy Spirit. We want things to change. We want things to change. We got to get in the spirit of God and see what the Lord is saying. Working together. Receive the word. Receive the spirit of God. If you watch me today, you don't know the Lord. You haven't repented of your sins. This is the day, this is the hour, this is the opportunity. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you today to amend your ways and your doing, to change what you've been doing. You need to receive the Lord Jesus today. The Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of the wrong I've done, the wrong I've been. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Now, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And I will serve you the rest of my life. If you prayed that prayer, you're already saved. you already repented of your sins. You're a candidate to receive the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. So every day in your prayer time, you ought to be praying for the Lord to fill you with the Spirit of God. Fill me with the indwelling Spirit of God. I repented of my sins. I've gotten rid of everything that's not of you. Fill me with the Spirit of God. Somebody's sick today. You're sick in your body. You're dealing with sickness. You're dealing with disease. We're praying today. We believe by Jesus Christ that you were and you are healed. If you can use your own hand as a point of contact, put your hand on what is there with you. And we believe God today with you. That God will heal you from the inside out and the outside in. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. If you feel and know that God healed you, go back to the doctor. Let the doctor give you the report. And if you go into the doctor and, and the doctor is giving you medicine, you ought to take that medicine. You don't go to the doctor and don't do what the doctor says. But you believe God. Pray. Our fatal thing is we don't pray. There's a king in the Bible. He was sick. He went to all the doctors. He had plenty of money. And he died. The Bible said he died because he failed to ask God to heal him. You can go to all the doctors in the world, but you better make sure you pray that God heals your body. That God will deliver you. That God will bring you through. Because no matter who, God is the only one that can make it happen. He's working through the doctors. He's working through whoever he's put on your side. Whoever God has brought into your life. God is working through them. You believe it today. So we praise God for you. Be blessed. Receive the word, receive the Holy Ghost. Give God praise in this place.